Hey everyone, it's really great to be here today and to be part of this TEDx event. I really enjoyed hearing from the other speakers and presenters about their ideas for how to make the learning process and experience even better for me. Well, students like me, I guess. Actually, I'm really excited to share with you some of, some of the ideas that I have about my experience and how teachers can help students take little ideas and make them into really big ideas. So I'd like to ask you to imagine that you're a teacher. That shouldn't be too hard, right? And now imagine that one of your darling students, one of the kids that either keeps you up at night or lets you sleep soundly, comes to you on a Monday morning, full of excitement and energy. You know, the kid who's never going to need coffee. Well, this kid comes to you with a crazy sounding and big, hairy, audacious goal or idea. What do you do? Do you A, listen with interest and tell them that it's a good idea, but have they thought about X, Y, or Z? Do you B, listen with interest and say, have you got the homework for the week done? Or do you C, listen with interest and tell them how you can help? Ask them how you can do that. Just think about your answer for now. I like to tell you what I've observed in my over, oh, in my over 10 years of student experience. What? I started Montessori preschool when I was two and a half and turned 13 in about two weeks. So that's a solid decade of experience right there, huh? <laughs> well, I've learned that teachers are dedicated. I mean, here you all are on a sunny Saturday, spending your day connecting and sharing ideas with other teachers, students, and other experts in your field of education. If you're anything like the teachers that I've been lucky to have, you come into school early, you stay late, and you spend a lot of your own personal time investing in the teaching that you do. You're innovators. You're always looking for new ways to engage your students. I mean, I've got to be a teacher who doesn't love to read. Teachers are open-minded and they're risk takers. You try out things like outdoor classrooms, or maybe even letting the students perform a play instead of writing an essay. You're influencers. Besides our parents, teachers are the adults that we spend the most amount of time with. I mean, seriously, we're with you six hours a day, five days a week. So, I mean, in the case of my youngest brother, he gets home at 4.30 after swimming or taekwondo, of course, and then goes to bed at around 8, 8.30. So that's, a, that's about three and a half, only four hours of influence under my mom or dad. I can tell you that students, they really do care about what you think and look to you for approval support, and guidance. What I'm really trying to say here is that teachers are pretty much rock stars. <laughs> now let's look at what makes kids succeed. An author by the name of Paul Tuff wrote a book called What Makes Kids Succeed. Pretty ironic title, huh? Well, in it he identified seven characteristics that can contribute to a child's likelihood of being successful. This includes grit, self-control, zest, gratitude, curiosity, social intelligence, and optimism. He talked about other factors as well, such as where kids live, and how much money their parents make, and also things such as what roles their parents play in their education. But let's just work for, with the idea that you, a student, has at least a few of these traits. Now, how do you help those kids to take the idea that they came to you with, and make it even bit bigger, or even a reality? Well, I believe that changing your ideas would definitely help their ideas. If you can see what they can take away and what they can learn from being able to share dreams with one another, the possibilities truly are endless. I like this quote by John Locke. He says, curiosity in children is but an appetite for knowledge. The, the great reason why children abandon themselves wholly to silly pursuits and trifle away their time insipidly is because they find the curiosity bulked and their inquiries neglected. So, when you can help your students' curiosity to grow, they want to learn more. I talked to teachers and parents, and even found information that, this, that backed this up. But I can tell you that I know this firsthand. TEDx Kids at Ambleside. I know, right? You're thinking, okay, hold on a second. This looks really familiar. Did a bunch of kids just rip off Mr. Cantley's idea? <laughs> no, we didn't actually. But it does seem, though, that at some point, Mr. Cantley and I were somehow cosmically sharing this brainwave, had the same great idea at around the same great time. So I attended the TEDx Kids at BC event in October 2012 at Science World and was blown away by what kids my age and not much older than me were doing. The idea was sparked and I was really passionate about bringing that experience to my school. 
At the time, I hadn't thought about the planning or logistics of having an event. I just knew that I wanted my friends, peers, and teachers to share their ideas in the TEDx format. You know, I didn't see obstacles. I saw the only the opportunity to do something that personally I thought was really cool. What happened next? Well, my mom was very supportive. She's one of those moms who's always sending me links and blogs and articles and picking up books that I wouldn't necessarily read by myself. She pretty much forced me to read in Malcolm Gladwell's The Outliers. The latest one she got me is called Ingenious. It's about the educators of Stanford University and their approach to, um, to creativity and brainstorming. And well, she encouraged me to talk to my teachers, with that, which I did. They were very supportive. They helped me think deeper, think broader, and dream bigger. Ms. Hicks, one of my teachers, helped me get a meeting with Mr. Kennedy, who you heard from earlier really today. I learned that being superintendent is a huge job. It's like being CEO of a company. But he listened to my idea, and in true Mr. Kennedy fashion, he got right behind it. He's been one of our biggest champions, supporters, and mentors all along the way. From there, I asked some of my peers and friends if they'd be interested in helping. Gratefully, they all said yes. We started playing TEDx Kids at Ambleside back in November 2012. So, the question is, what am I learning? Well, actually, I'm learning a lot. Leadership and organization. I'm running out the agenda and leading our meetings and keeping the team on track, making sure we're done our deadlines, that we're meeting them, and that everyone's able to get their respective parts done. My time management and prioritizing. Yeah, this one's been a pretty big one for me. I mean, I've learned that Instagram, it's not going anywhere, and that I've got a limited amount of time to get these projects done. <laughs> Marketing and sales. Selling the idea to speakers, sponsors, and community leaders has been a great experience for me. I've learned a lot about using social media as well, and being able to get my message across through those that way. Communication skills. I presented to the principal's meeting, to schools, high school student council, and now to all of you. I've had to write letters to parents, sponsors, and community leaders, and of course communicating with the folks over at TED. This has all definitely made my business writing much stronger. I've done interviews with media, which really makes me need to know what your message is going to be and what you want to say, what you want to get across. Budgeting, planning, and scheduling. Another area I had very little experience in before this. But now I understand how important it is to know where money is coming from, where it's going to, and how to track it all. Timelines, like seriously, they're so important. I mean, we've given Mr. Kennedy and Ted all on the way progress on what we've been doing. How to face obstacles and challenges. This has been a big one. I mean, I've learned a lot about myself and how others deal with problems and situations when they come across them. I found strategies that work for me to problem solve and how to ask for help when I need it. So in all, I've learned so much from this process. I know our team has learned a lot too, and it's actually been a lot of fun and really rewarding as well. How you can help. So I came up with a list of five things you can do to help your students really achieve big ideas. One, dream with your students and kids. Most of you who are teachers probably familiar with Dear Time, Drop Everything and Read. Well, maybe once a week introduce Bead Time, Brain Engage and Dream, where you can just sit and blue sky ideas. Two, ask great and interesting questions. Offer resources and ideas. Maybe there's a book or a website, a documentary, a parent expert who can come in and help and maybe even explore the idea further. Three, don't be limited by what has or hasn't done, been done before. Tell you the truth, I wouldn't be here if anyone that I had talked to said it couldn't be done just because it hadn't been done before. Four, see the idea for how it can be a way to teach and for a way to students to, to how they can learn. This goes back to how curiosity fuels and embeds learning. And then five, stand back and be there to push us further, but also catch us sometimes too when we need it. What next? Creativity energy is contagious. Ask yourself how you can spread it. Bring examples of kids all around the globe doing incredible things. Tell you the truth, you don't have to look far for examples. 
youth leaders, activists, TEDx speakers. They're just a few of many. What, I'm what I want to tell you guys is to challenge yourself to be the spark. So, what's next for me? Tribesofhumanity.com, my first venture and summer project. This is my idea for a streetwear clothing company with a conscience. I'm in the process of looking for contacts in sustainable fabric, printing processes, distribution, as well as nonprofits to partner with and support with partial proceeds. If you have any interest in learning more, please get in touch with me at my email address. So in conclusion, by teaching students personal involvement and being able to share and dream your ideas and what you want to do, the possibilities truly are endless. Thank you.